Hello again, everybody. It's Scott Casper, Takedown Media. Our conversation today is with a very special guest. He's in the Nike hot seat. Matt Storniolo joins us, the new head coach for Northwestern Wrestling. Matt, congratulations. Thank you, Scott. Jim Phillips made the announcement on Thursday. You were notified on Wednesday at any point between named interim head coach and the point when you were being named coach. Did you think you were going to get it or did you? I mean, what was the, what was it like being an interim coach? It was uh, it was a nice opportunity, but I'm glad I only had to go through it for one season. Um, there there were some times a bit added stress and just the fear of the unknown, what was going to happen at the end of the season. And really, uh, no, I wasn't sure what was going to happen until the decision was made. I was optimistic and hopeful that I had uh, done some things over the past couple of months that showed the administration and, and this university that I was the right guy for the job. But until I uh, got the word, I, I wasn't sure how it was going to go. Being an interim head coach. I've, I've never even liked the tag interim, you know, either you're the head coach or you're not. But either way, the guys responded to you, finished the year strong. You had some, um, well, some, I think, great uh, great years as a, a coach for Northwestern. Uh, you've been able to assist uh, for, what, uh, six or seven years? Right, so six years uh, with the program as an assistant before this year. This was my seventh year at Northwestern. Okay, and I've always teased you, teased you. Nobody wears a sweater better than you do, perhaps. So will uh, sweaters yeah. continue under your uh, tutelage? Yeah, yeah, I think so. You'll you'll see see some sweaters in the future. Not too much will change. Clean, clean up the appearance just a little, and with the new role comes some new responsibilities. But for the most part, I'm the same old Matt. Same old Matt Storniolo. Well, let's take a look at your past, how you got to where you are today. Uh, we go back and look at your collegiate experience. You were a two-school uh, athlete. In other words, you started out at one place and ended up in another. Um, how is it that you started out at Penn State and transferred to Oklahoma? Oh, uh, well, I, you know, I grew up in, in Pennsylvania. I graduated from State College Area High School and uh, had, had a good two years at Penn State. Um, and after that redshirt freshman year, uh, I just decided to explore some other opportunities. Um, really can't say a bad thing about the Penn State wrestling program or the coaches I had there. Um, I, they helped get me to where I am today. And, and you know, the next step for me was Oklahoma. And, uh, and yeah, it's just the way it worked out. That was Jack Spates at Oklahoma, right? Correct. And, of course, uh, Big 12. Uh, opportunities there, Big 12 championships, and I mean, this was a, uh, a tremendous opportunity for you to continue your growth, uh, and, and I think you see that. Just watching you coach, I think you understand that a wrestling coach is so much more than just a wrestling coach, right? That's very true. Talk to me about the responsibility you feel to today's student-athlete. Well, uh, it's 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 different game today, and especially in a place like Northwestern, we're not just about producing you know, good wrestlers it's it's about the total experience here and these kids are they're student athletes they're they're as much a student as they are an athlete here and that's something that we take very seriously here and that's something that we had a, a good deal of success in this year first quarter we had a 3.3 gpa and uh just found out last week uh, after ncas that the second quarter we were at 3.25 so back-to-back -back, uh quarters with above a 3.0 um Second one being in season, which is a pretty pretty good accomplishment, uh, and and it goes to show what what we preach here to our athletes. That's a tremendous performance. I don't even know how that's done. I knew kids at school that had a three point, uh, but <laughs> not well. <laughs> it was definitely out of my reach. But uh, well, congratulations on an outstanding academic performance. I got to believe that that's a message handed down from from uh, the athletic director and the uh, university president on down to all coaches, though, right? It, it is, and uh, I mean Northwestern. We we can brag about in the fall. We had nineteen of nineteen sports, all above a three zero. And I don't know if there are many or any other programs or university at uh, athletic departments that can that can brag about that the same way that we can let's talk a bit about uh how duties are divided up now under under you uh who handles what weights uh well it, it's a team effort here now obviously we have we have certain guys that gravitate towards coaches in the weight classes but for us it's more about styles um yeah, mike mcmullen when, when he was here he that guy wrestled like a lightweight. So to, to stick that guy with a, a heavyweight coach, that 
that wouldn't have done him justice. So we don't get hung up as much on, on the weight classes as we do the style of the wrestler and, and what coach we feel suits that style best. Um, obviously, in terms of workouts, uh, I'm not going to go out there and roll around with our, our heavyweights, but that's not going to stop me from working on technique with them. Let's talk a bit about those that you've uh, coached. Is there a favorite type of athlete? I'm not going to ask you to name a name, but is there a favorite type of athlete that just absolutely, you know, stokes the fires in in uh, in, in your coaching uh, style? I, I don't think so, and I think that's one of the things that it's special and, and unique and enjoyable about coaching is each athlete brings something different to the table. So you might have some kids that their leadership, how they are in the classroom, those types of things are, are their big attributes. And other kids, they're, they're better on the mat. And some guys are more exciting when they wrestle. Some guys went a little bit boring. So I don't think there's a particular style or mold that, that my you know, favorites would fall into. I, I think it changes on, on a kid-to-kid -kid basis. And, and again, I think that's one of the things that makes coaching pretty special. Being a qualifier in the NCAAs is a difficult task. Winning them out is surely uh, uh, one that, uh, that that experience is, is savored, I'm sure, by those that uh, have, you know, that are of those 10 weights that do it each year. But uh, a four-time qualifier, you enjoyed that status yourself. Um, it, is that is something you can teach or coach to, being a four-time qualifier and going in and saying, hey, guys, I was a four-time qualifier. Here's how you do it. Or how does that happen? Uh, I think it all changes on the individual. Um, you know, di different athletes come into college with, with different goals and different abilities, and I, I think that's you know, that, that's something that changes athlete to athlete. Um, if if you were to ask somebody, and we'll use former wrestlers, somebody like Jason Welch, would say, you know, you were a four time NCAA qualifier. I don't think Jason Welch would look at that and say, like, yes, I was four time NCAA qualifier. For Jason coming in, it was it was to be a four time. All American and and you know maybe a couple time national champ, so it, the the goals change with the individuals. Um, obviously, you have to get to the to the dance to do well at it, um, and and that's the the goal first and foremost is to prepare during the season to get yourself there. But uh, you know, you you go about it just like every other person. You come into practice every day. You try to make make small gains every day. You're not going to win a national championship or qualify for the NCAA tournament overnight. That's not something that, that happens in a weekend. That's something that your preparation throughout the year gets you to. And so as long as you're coming into practice, doing the right things every day and doing the right things outside of practice, you're giving yourself a shot to make that happen. And, then, and based on the individual, everybody's goal is going to be different. But especially here at Northwestern, our, our goal is not just to get to NCAAs. I can't imagine it is. Matt Storniolo, our guest, uh, I, I appreciate um, the impact that you had on uh, two-time NCAA qualifier Pierce Harger. Uh, that guy had a whole lot to give on the mat and uh, is one of the, you know, one of my faves to watch. Uh, did you enjoy working with him? Loved working with him. I'm going to cut you off there. I believe Pierce is a four-time NCAA qualifier, one-time All-American, should have been a two-time All-American, but... Um, I don't know how many people know the story outside of, of the program and some people close to Pierce, but Pierce actually dislocated his shoulder during the warm-up um, prior to the quarterfinal round of NCAAs, uh, would have been about just over a year ago now. Um, unfortunately, I, I was the one warming up Pierce, and that, that injury occurred with literally two seconds left in our warm-up. But to, to go back to Pierce, he is... Um, Pierce is really, he's the epitome of, of a Northwestern student athlete. He was academic Big Ten all four years. He was academic All-American. He is an NCAA um, All-American. And really just his attitude and approach couldn't have been uh, couldn't have been better. He, he came to practice every day ready to get better. He didn't shy away from a single competition. If you look at at his senior year, Pierce wrestled a bear of a schedule. He didn't miss a single match. He was ready to compete week in, week out. It didn't matter who was against. He was ready to show up and, and get out there and battle. And uh, not just on the map, but, but in the classroom too. And that's why Pierce is crushing it professionally right now and, and yeah, making us all proud. Amazing athlete. Amazing athlete. I did not know that about his uh... – his injury, that's, uh, that tells me even more. Uh, yep. Will your coaching staff uh, see any changes over the next few months? 
Yeah, we will see some changes. Um, Coach Tim Szeski is going to slide back into his director of, of Midland's uh, role, and so that opens up the, the first assistant position. And uh, it's a pretty exciting time. Um, it, it's nice for us because not too much changes with the program. Timmy's still around. Pieces are still – the same pieces are, are here. It's just they're going to be placed a little bit differently, and it's going to let us use all of our resources and, and put together the best staff and, and the best program that we could possibly put together. I got to believe there's a ton of support out there for you. I remember uh, I had a certain phone call for, and I, he'll remain nameless, but a very uh, influential guy in the sport, a very influential guy when it comes to Northwestern wrestling. Uh, he periodically will call me and I'll go, okay, what's up? You know, and then he'll, he'll get to his point and I'll say, you know what? That was a worthwhile phone call. And uh, he told me all about you as if I didn't know anything. He just basically started at the bottom and, worked his way up and uh it's guys like that that can uh, i think really sail you know s you know set a sail if you will on a ship he uh he understands the sport it's it's need for market and strong leadership and he identified you as being a guy that could absolutely bring it to the table congratulations uh, are there people you would like to recognize or thank Job. If, if I did that, we'd, we'd be here all day. Um, I have a, a laundry list that is very long of people that helped get me here, and it starts all the way back from when I was five years old at the Springfield Athletic Club, um, starting wrestling, and and you know, my youth coaches back there, Tim and Tom Fligger, Dave Pecunia, Doug Beecher, pe people that I have not seen, some of these people seen in, in forever, and uh, I can't remember the last time I, I talked to them or, or really honestly thought their names but when I really have time to sit here and think about it, it it starts way back then when I was five years old all the way up through through middle school and high school coaches I had a couple of great high school coaches a couple of great club coaches um, so we'll go back to Dale Bonzel with Team Renegade uh, club that I wrestled for Coach Kennett at the Haverford School Scott Pfeiffer um, at State College and then my college coaches. Yeah, like I said, I was I was only at Penn State for two years, but that was the beginning of my co my college career and Coach Sutherland, Coach Hart, John Hughes, they they got the ball rolling with me and then from there Jack Spates, Jeremy Spates, Barry Weldon, they they took over and and then after college I, I had some tutelage as as a uh, as an assistant under Steve Martin, you know, working under Timmy and, and everybody here at Northwestern and and then if we're going to step outside of the, the actual wrestling realm, the, the university here, the administration, everybody in this department really couldn't have been more supportive this year. And it was, it was a roller coaster of a year. We, we had some adversity and, and the program went through some things, but it, it, was, it was really nice to see. It was comforting. And, and like I said, it was, it was overwhelming. The amount of support that this, this office uh, drew, was, it was unbelievable. How uh, will will there be any changes in recruiting? Um, some some changes. I, I know the wrestling world knows Nick Greenan uh, was released from his NLI uh, last week. He he requested that just before the decision was made. Um, we the administration and, and I we we talked together. We you know, if, if somebody wants to explore other opportunities, we don't want to hold them back, and uh, we want to wish Nick. The best of luck, but we still have three really good commits right now, and uh, I think we'll add one or two more before the end of the signing period, and uh, and that's that's critical. You, you need to get the good recruits in to keep the team going, and uh, and biggest issue that we need to overcome right now is depth. We need to add a few more recruits so that we can uh, avoid situations like we were in this year where we sustain a few injuries and now we have open weight classes nobody likes seeing forfeits nobody likes having to give them up and and that's top priority to to combat to fix well the wildcats have uh, made a strong move in uh, taking that interim label off of your title you are the new head coach of wrestling at northwestern university home of the wildcats and uh, tell you what it was a good day when I heard that. Mac, congratulations to you, and uh, hats off to Jim Phillips for making a strong uh, and a wise decision. I think he hired a good one. I, I do too, Scott. I'll tip my hat to, to Jim as well. <laughs> I'm sure you will. All right. Uh, for all of us at Takedown, congratulations to our guest, Matt Storniolo. Uh, we appreciate the opportunity to have him in the Nike hot seat. Uh, it's not too hot, is it, Matt? 
No, no, it's not too bad. Okay. All right. Well, thanks for the time today. I appreciate it. Fans, thanks for watching as always. This has been a special edition and a special Nike hot seat today with our guest, the new head coach of Northwestern, Matt Storniola. <laughs>